Well, there it is. It's the famed Hinkle Fieldhouse. And for the first time in school history, the UConn Huskies going to play a game on the campus of Butler University. We're taking you right up to tip off coming up at the bottom of the hour. And all the action on the way here on your home for UConn women's basketball. It is SNY as we welcome you the UConn women's basketball pregame show presented by Cadillac. I'm Gary Apple. Thrilled once again to be alongside Kara Walters, the number one team in America. The UConn Huskies getting set to play their fifth consecutive road game. They've been on the road yeah. for a long time. They're coming off that win against Creighton on Thursday. A career night from Nika Mule. She had 19 points in that game. 15 of those, Kara, came in the first quarter. I mean, she was on fire out of the gate. What impressed you most about what was a career night for Nika Mule? <laughs> Well, a lot of things. I mean, they left her wide open and they didn't respect her and she capitalized on it. You know, Nika Mule's interesting to me and Gino said that she's one of those players that when she gives you offense, like my dad. My dad played for Bob Cousy and Bob Cousy said you rebound and everything else is gravy, right? So Nika Mule is a gravy player. I mean, your gravy player gave you 19 points, though. <laughs> yes. That's pretty darn good. So Gino said we're not necessarily look looking for her to score 19 points a night. But if she does, look what she adds to the offense. Plus, she's a fantastic passer. So offensively, she helps you in other ways she does as well. By, by the way, that, that nice little slide in there. I know you lost your dad this year, yeah. and, and that has been tough for you. Yeah. But uh, the fact that Bob Cousy said that about your father, that's... Yeah. The legend, Bob Cousy, your dad was a tremendous player, He by was the way. a great rebounder, yes. so that's why Bob Cousy said, and everything else you do, if you score for us, it's gravy. So that's, Nika Mule's gravy is pretty good with 19 points. Now, no question. You and I, as we're sitting and watching her, she's got great form, right? The yes. jump shot, and it's, it, she doesn't get off the ground all that much, but the form uh, from here up is, is tremendous. Yeah, I, I tell the, the kids I coach, watch Nika Mule's form. I mean, it is perfect. She locks her elbow, snaps her wrist. I tell the girls, I teach it's like you're reaching your hand in a cookie jar that's way on <laughs> top of the that. fridge right so Nika Mule got a few cookies the other night that's for sure because her follow-through is textbook sweet she gets up there good lock of the wrist I mean you have to respect that in her as a shooter I mean she just does a terrific job look at that form gear do you have that form when you play well I do occasionally <laughs> <laughs> when I'm spotting up, when I'm on the run, I can get a little lazy with, with, with my form. I do want to turn to the defensive side yeah. for Nika for a moment, because I know there was a time early in the season where uh, players were getting by her. We yeah. questioned her one-on-one -on -one defense. What are you seeing defensively from her? Well, I, I, I'm seeing a kid who takes pride in her work that's tough as nails, that brings a lot of energy, and she wasn't going to settle for being yelled at for not keeping players in front of her. She's one of those gritty, you want her in your foxhole kind of players. So, yes, people were getting by and she dug down deep in her soul and said, this is not happening to me. I think defense, it is athleticism, but a lot of it is heart and effort, Gary, and she brings you that. So defensively, she does a great job. She's getting the assignment of the best player on the opposing team, and what she's doing is picking some pockets, and their defense leads to offense. So she's done a tremendous job ever since she's gotten the challenge from Gino. When you get a challenge from Gino, he'll say something like, you can't guard that girl. You, you can't guard. And Nika <laughs> Mule said, yes, I can. And you see the way she took on that challenge and she's getting good assignments now and they've been a different team since she's been in yeah. the starting lineup so she's been really good another area where UConn has been thriving as of late points off turnovers these numbers brought to you by Cadillac it's been three consecutive games the Huskies scoring over 20 points off turnovers and we always talk about turning defense into offense what makes UConn elite when it comes to this portion of the game well, I, I think they do a great job of spacing, okay? So they play defense, and then they want to get out in transition, right? So they get out wide. They leave a lot of room so you can do things in there offensively. But that, to me, is their bread and butter. And Gino's talked about their, their transition game. First of all, you have to rebound the basketball, right? You have to rebound and go, or you have to steal the ball. They've done a good job getting in passing lanes like Paige Beckers does because she has Olivia Nelson Adota behind her. She can take that risk to get in that denial position a little further out because you have someone like her back there so I think between the effort the spacing the defense it's everything is kind of gelling together to get those transition points and Gino likes when they can run right they don't have to think they just get the ball and go have a lot of finishers on their team 
it's a great situation. And, and when you've got a player as good as Paige Beckers is, we're going to talk about Paige uh, coming up a little bit here. Wait, I, wait, I know. Wait, she's what at we, the end of the show? Well, five minutes and 56 seconds before our first Paige Beckers real mention on this show. But <laughs> And we are going to talk more about her in just a little bit. But her uh, ability to see the floor yeah. in the open floor, yeah. right, that is something that is so elite that helps this team score in transition. I mean, phenomenal. Her basketball IQ. Now, Gino's been on her, right? You need to shoot more. The other day, he said she was on strike because she did not shoot enough. So <laughs> here's Gino Orama saying you need to shoot more. But on the other hand, he's saying you're never going to change a player like Paige, who is unselfish, who just sees the floor so well. That's her first option, right? Giving up a good shot for a great shot. She knows who she's playing with. They're all capable of scoring. This is a perfect situation for a passer like her to be in. You're not going to change her. She's a great player with a great basketball IQ. Whoever's open, that's who she's going to get the ball to. But uh, let's see if she's on strike today and looks to <laughs> shoot the ball a little more. I, I think she'll be fine. Yeah. And, and as we, by the way, I needed to get this in here before we go to break. We heard Gino say in the open that Anika Mule is his slime. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know if this works or not. You, are, am I your slime? Uh, you you my are my slime. slime. You We've are my a, slime. Right? We had to ask what that meant, right? That's like, you're my road dog. You're my dog. You're, you're my man. Right. So, yeah, you're my slime. I'm your slime. <laughs> it's good to know. We've been together eight years yeah, I mean, too, too, at this point. So we're, long. we're just getting going here on UConn. Our UConn women's basketball pregame show. The transition game is important. No question about that. But if UConn wants to win a championship, they've got to succeed in the half court. Karen going to take us into Karen's corner to show us how can, they can get that done when we come back in just a moment and on the way and as we head for break right here Kristen Williams she has been excelling on the offensive end in recent days she's averaging about 20 a game over her last four games so it's UConn and Butler on the way here on SNY and we are back in just a moment well there is the freshman guard Nika Mule coming off that career high 19 points on Thursday she's also averaging about three steals a game over her last eight games so getting it done in a variety of ways so we focused in on UConn scoring uh, in a transition area a few minutes ago but one area that uh, is going to play a crucial role moving into the month of March their half court offense and we are seeing some positive signs as of late uh, when it comes to that and for more now on how UConn is running their offense it is the latest edition of Kara's Corner. Oh Kara. Thanks, Gary. Although UConn scores a lot of points in transition, they do some really good things in the half-court set, despite Gino's criticism of it. We're going to take a look at one of the things Gino might be referring to when he nitpicks their offense, and then we'll get to the positive. So in this possession, you have a lot of movement, setting some screens for Paige Beckers, because of course, you want to get her open. The problem with this possession is this. There is a lot of room in between that screen. You're supposed to come off shoulder to shoulder. Yes, Paige Becker, she is human. She made a mistake. She doesn't come off shoulder to shoulder. Defense doesn't make her pay because they don't slide through that opening, which you should do. But here's what's going to happen. Your big girl's going to get in trouble. Here's Olivia Nelson Adota trying to meet her to give her another screen, but she can get a moving screen for that. She comes off it, still makes it work. Good things happen for Paige Beckers. We're going to show you the positive sides. Now, a lot of spacing in the same play, trying to get Paige Beckers open. She comes off a little too wide, however, gets to the spot, gives Olivia Nelson a Dota the easy bucket for two. In this next possession, it's all about the pick and roll. Some of their bread and butter this season, and we'll show you why they can get the pick and roll. Here's what happens. Good spacing in here. You have Kristen Williams, Aubrey Griffin, Nika Mule. You can have these two work on the pick and roll because they have all that space in there. You see it develop, lots of room. Aaliyah Edwards, right to the basket. On this last possession, this is what happens when you're Paige Beckers. People have to guard you. One, two, three, four people guarding Paige Beckers, which leaves her teammate, Nika Mule, wide open on the three-point line. So Paige notices, recognizes it. Nika Mule, with a fantastic three, knocks it down. UConn's going to have to score points in transition and the half-court set if they're going to go deep into the tournament. Back to you, Gary. 
All right, Kara, good stuff still to come here on our pregame show. Leah Edwards, her development has really been one of the keys to UConn ascending to the top of the national rankings. We'll examine what she is doing so well when we come back from Studio 31 in a gif. Well, there is Olivia Nelson Adota getting set to go at Hinkle Fieldhouse. The junior coming off her sixth double-double of the season last time out. And for more on today's game, going to head out right now to Indianapolis. Join our crew on the call, Alan Beswick and Meg Colmo. Guys. All right, Gary, thanks. Well, Meg, I'm sure you've heard it around town a lot, too. The closer we get to March, the more people want to talk about this number one ranked team in the country's potential to win a national championship. And you and I were talking about these junior leaders and what we need to see from them to win a national championship. What do you think? Well, you know, obviously, you know, Paige Beckers, we know everything about her and, and, and she's terrific, but they're going to need more than that, right? And I, I think these juniors, because with such a young team, they're the only ones who have NCAA tournament experience, yeah. even though nobody went last year as it was canceled, but they need these these three juniors, Avina Westbrook, Chris, um, Kristen Williams, and Olivia nelson Adota, to just do what they do. Like, they don't have to do anything outrageous. Just be that leadership, be the strength, do what you do, yep. and everything else will take care of itself. You be you, kind yes, of a thing. Yeah, you do you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's talk about Aaliyah Edwards for a minute, because the potential to have the two bigs on the floor against certain matchups in the tournament is going to be important. What has impressed you the most about Aaliyah Edwards' growth from December when we started to now? Gosh, Aaliyah Edwards to me is so incredible as a freshman to play the way she plays with the strength and that determination. Think of it, last year at this time, her high school season was over. And she's kind of kicking it into another yeah. level right now, yeah. which is pretty incredible. And for her to impose her will like she does physically in the lane, that's very rare for freshmen to do. But that, I think, proves how special she is. And I just can't wait to watch her develop. I can't wait to watch her in March. We'll see how that goes. But first, today and Butler. And we'll tip it off in just a little bit here in Hinkle, Gary. All right, Alan and Meg, look forward to that coming up in just about 13 minutes here on SN White. I thought, you know, talking about Aaliyah Edwards, she's been tremendous as a freshman. And her and Olivia Nelson and Dota on the court at the same time do present mm -hmm. issues for opposing teams. Now, Olivia's defensive stats, they are down a little bit this season, but she's been a huge factor defensively. What, what's yeah. impressed you? Uh, along those lines. I, mean, I, I don't care what the stats say necessarily. Yeah. They're down a little bit, but she's still up for Naismith player or defensive player yes. of the year. So clearly people recognize her as a threat. And oftentimes as a big, things don't show up in the stat sheet. So it's not always how many blocks did I have? How many, how many shots did she like deter people from coming in there? How many people thought twice before driving the lane because of Olivia Nelson and Dota? So even if you're not blocking shots, you're making people People think twice before going in there. I think she's done a great job of that. And another thing, Gary, I think she's hedged really well on the screen. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of screening action. I don't remember it as much last year. Um, some coaches say, hey, just go under a screen. Some coaches hedge the screen. This season, she's jumping out and having to recover. It's a lot of work for a big to do that, and I think she's done a great job. Also closing out, also post-defense. I mean, there's so many things that I don't care what the stats say. She's done a terrific job on the defense. And, and those things, those little things you're talking about, hedging yeah. on screens, uh, th those come with understanding the game better and growing as a player, which she has certainly done this year. I do want to hit on Aubrey Griffin for a moment. She started the last time UConn faced off against Butler. She had a double-double in that game, three blocks against Creighton. She can be a huge weapon for this team. How is she uh, best used, and how do you see her role playing out as we go down the stretch here? Well... Gary, she's another one of those what I would classify as a gravy player, right? Mm -hmm. So anything you get from Aubrey offensively is a bonus. Now, you're going to get from her putbacks around the rim, that sort of thing. She's not going to shoot threes for you. She's not necessarily going to give you that kind of points. But she is going to do things like be a great defender. She's so athletic, right? She's like a Gabby Williams, just super athletic. And I think she still needs more confidence. I really do because she hasn't really found her role yet because she's used intermittently you know in this game a lot in this game so there's no flow to her yet and I think her confidence is low however extremely athletic 
great player, smart, but she does. you don't need her to score 20 points a game. You just need her to be her. And I think Gino says when she tries to be something other than herself, that's where the problems start. But she's super athletic, and she could really help this team. She uh, certainly can. And she yeah. comes from su such great basketball lineage yeah. and stock. Her father played in the NBA. I watched her brother play for Syracuse today. Yeah. He had 20 points in the first half for the Cuse against Georgia Tech. So I would imagine those those battles growing up with her and her her. Family members? I'm <laughs> you sure had they to were. throw in Syracuse, didn't you, Gare? Well, they <laughs> lost today, so it doesn't make me feel very good, but. His school. Yes. <laughs> more to come here. Our pregame coverage continues in a moment. UConn looks to go to 20 and 1 on the season. The freshman, Paige Becker, somehow, you know, she has exceeded expectations, and those expectations were so high to begin with. We're going to take a deep dive into her season and hear from Chris Daly on what makes her so special when we come back. Swing it over for Beckers. Here's a three ball. It's good! Back to Beckers who will let it fly. Yes! <laughs> 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 a Paige Beckers! Beckers, you're <laughs> kidding me. What a pass. Beautiful play by Beckers. The quarterback to the running wide receiver. When you talk about players making other people better, that's what a point guard does. Well, it has been an incredible season to this point for the freshman Paige Beckers as we welcome in Maria Marino right now. And Maria, uh, we hear from Gino, the Hall of Famer, all the time, heaping praise, big time praise on Paige. But what about the other Hall of Famer on the coaching staff? That's the associate head coach, Chris Daly. Fill us in on what she has to say about Paige. Chris Daly is certainly as qualified as they come. So it was a real treat to speak with her earlier this week and get her opinion on the hot topic that is Paige Beckers. She told me what really makes Paige special is not necessarily her basketball gifts and talents, but it's more intangible. She's totally unselfish. I think that she is a great teammate. And I think that she puts a lot of time in her game and spends a lot of time because she wants to be really good. And those three things for me stand out for Paige. It would be a different story on our team totally if she was not a good teammate or if she was not unselfish, because that is really hard as a freshman and in, in, in trying to kind of have everybody buy into their roles. There's nobody that gets more excited for what other, you know, what her teammates do than Paige. So I think those three things separate her from any other freshman in the country. That last line, a bit intriguing because there is some debate about who the best freshman is across the sport. And what I can say about Paige is the way she contributes up and down the stat sheet consistently, the load that she carries for the number one team in the nation is pretty undeniable. I'm going to say this, Maria, if, if you're uh, having me start a team with one freshman, I'm taking Paige Beckers, <laughs> right? I don't think there's any question about that. From where I sit, we thank you, Maria. Uh, Kara, I know you love Paige Beckers and what she's done this year. Well, what about something that she has done that, in your eyes, has exceeded expectations? Well, honestly, when she came in and you look at Paige Beckers, right, you kind of see a little skinny. You're not sure what you're going to get from her. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you watch her play and you go, oh my goodness. But what I like about her is the way she's been able to drive to the basket and get in there amongst bigger, stronger players at the college level and totally hold her, hold her own or even more, right? So she gets banged around, she goes, she doesn't hesitate. With that smaller frame, I, I wasn't sure how that was going to work out, but... I think it's working out all right for her, Gary. I think it's working out. We saw her on that last bucket right there. Her ability as she's taking the ball to the basket to square up, to square her body. Yeah. And that's the sort of fundamentals that she brings to the floor every single day and night. And that understanding of really how to play the game. And we heard Chris say those intangible things, but there are also the game minutia that she yeah. really just seems to get. Yeah, and that's that's extraordinary yeah. that's not normal and we talked about her mid-range jumper so she can pull up she can drive she can stop on a dime but like Chris Daly said this team would not be the same if Paige Beckers wasn't so unselfish and she, listen smart players know right if you're going to succeed as a team 
then, then you're gonna get glory anyway. So let's do it together. Uh, but one of the smartest freshmen I've ever seen play the game. So we close in on game time. The number one team in the land, the UConn Huskies, getting set to take on the Butler Bulldogs. UConn's first trip ever to the famed Hinkle Fieldhouse. We've got the starting lineup when we come right back. Well, Paige Becker is still leading UConn in points and assists, steals, and three-point shooting percentage. The freshman has scored in double figures in each of her last 10 games. We get a check right now. UConn starting lineup. It is brought to you by Town Fair Tire. And no change here. Beckers and Williams, Avita Westbrook, Nika Mule, and then Olivia Nelson Adota. By the way, Hinkle Fieldhouse, you know, we've spoken about it many times here on, the, on this uh, pregame show, but Hinkle Fieldhouse, Hoosiers, right? Do you think there'll be a Hoosiers-like upset? I do not believe that's going to happen <laughs> today. That's that's tradition. I, that, there's a lot of history Oh, my there. gosh. I hope, I hope Gino made him watch Hoosiers on the way. I hope so. Hickory High? <laughs> yeah. All right, Karen and I go to see you back at the half. Right now, we head for Indianapolis. UConn and Butler enjoy the action here on SNY. One of the dream destinations for any college basketball fan sits on the campus of Butler University in Indianapolis. UConn women's basketball plays at historic Hinkle Fieldhouse next. The Wrigley Field or Fenway Park of basketball. Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, where the number one ranked UConn women's basketball team takes on the Butler Bulldogs today in their second to last game of the regular season. And hi, everybody from Indianapolis with Megan Cuomo. I'm Alan Bestwick. So as February gets ready to turn to March, fans of the 11-time national champion Huskies begin to talk about national championships. From what we've seen from this team all season long, Megan, what has to happen for them, besides win, for them to win another national championship. Well, you know, it's such a it's such a fun process to to watch, and and having been watching for a really long time with this team, at this time of year, they really, really get themselves going, and they are really peaking at the right time. You see all their stats, um, and it's amazing that they're leading the country in field goal percentage because Gino has complained all year that they're not a great shooting team. Yeah. But I think they all just have to play their role. They have to continue to attack offensively. Their defense has been sort of a surprise at how good that they have been. Uh, and But they've gotten better and better. And that's kind of what I was saying before. They're just peaking at the right time, which they normally do. But it's going to be fun to watch this team because they're looking a little bit like the teams of old, the way they can distribute, share the ball, and score. Uh, one of the reasons they're looking like the teams of old is the play of Paige Beckers. Been a lot of great players come through this program, a lot of great freshman performances. Indisputable that Paige has had one of the best freshman seasons ever. One of, what's made it so special to you? I mean, her maturity, her ability to score. I mean, her be off the dribble, the way she can use screens and read defenses and is, is so fluid, so efficient. And the way she distributes the basketball, she has such incredible vision. She's a tremendous three-point shooter, leads this team not only in three-point shooting, but in points, assists, and you see her stealing the ball there and finishing. She's an outstanding defender, and that she was not known for that coming in, but she's worked really hard at it over the course of this season. Well, Paige Beckers and the Huskies play two more games in the regular season, then on into the Big East Tournament before looking toward the NCAA Tournament. This is the fifth of five straight games on the road in February. In the prior four, Connecticut outscored the opponents by a combined 152 points. What will today bring? UConn and Butler tip off next. And the starting lineups for today's game presented by Subaru for UConn. The usual five now, Beckers, Williams, Mule, Westbrook, and Nelson Adota. For Butler, the two to watch, Genesis Parker, number two, and Okako Adika, number four. They scored 33 of the Bulldogs' 35 points in the January 19th game at Gamble Pavilion. UConn head coach Shino Oriema with 155 consecutive wins in conference play. 
between the Big East and the American Athletic Conference. You see the last loss way back there, last game in the Big East in 2013 to Notre Dame. What a setting. Fans in the house today got some cheerleaders. Yeah, one of the most is, historic venues in college basketball. This is the coolest building that I, I've ever been in. With all the history, it's awesome. So underway as Olivia Nelson Dota wins the tip for the Huskies wearing the national flag blue road uniforms. Butler's going to be in a, in a zone, so UConn has got to pass the ball, get into the gaps. you got to get the ball into the middle of the floor, too. Shot clock running down. There you go. Cut by Westbrook and gets it up and in. And again, Nelson Adota, such a good passer from that high post. UConn created 32 Butler turnovers in that January 19th game, so the Huskies with a little pressure right away to start. Parker with the ball, defended by Luka Muir. Shot clock at 10. Dew. Cut off, double team, still finds a way to throw it up, but didn't hit any iron. Huskies run. Mule to Beckers. Over the top of Mule. That could be an example of take it in and shoot the ball. But she threw the ball to the corner where Mule was. And Mule tried to move up to the wing to get open. Uh, behind the play, Gino having a word with Paige as she came back down the floor. And Kako Adika leads the Bulldogs in just about everything, including scoring. Looking for some help, 10 to shoot. Five seconds, turnover by Butler. Like the red? Yeah, you see he's wearing the red today uh, to support his buddy Tiger Woods. It's not, it's not Sunday, but Saturday, Saturday's close enough. It's all about winning, right? There you go. Nelson Adota. Couldn't get the shot to go, got her own miss, and puts it up and in. Libby Nelson Adota had a double double to lead the Huskies in the game off at Gamble. Now the defensive pressure again from UConn. And it goes from Odika. Kako Odika, the junior from Denmark. Four, three, no. And it bounced over the back and will be turned over on the miss. Can't criticize the shot. She was open and took it. Yeah, she, I mean, wide open and she had a lot of time. Just a little long with it. Husky's looking at by a little front court pressure. Nice job by Butler to get over the timeline. Atosu. No. Defended. Shot clock down to 10 for UConn. It's a great flash. That's where it's going to be open in the middle of that lane. Nice job by Nelson Adota to flash right to that elbow. A couple of friendly bounces off the rim. Upe Atosu. We did not see in the game. And that is going to be a travel as Kristen Williams got the good hand on the ball in the block. See Paige Becker's always looking. The nice flash against that zone. That's the spot that's open and the nice friendly roll on the road. Mule. Yes, for three. It was a perfect pass from Becker's too. Perfectly timed. And a foul underneath on Butler. I think that's gonna be on a Tosu. I mean, just perfectly timed. Drew the defense to her which freed up Mule in the corner. 
Huskies get another chance here to add on to their six-point lead. That goes inside to Nelson Adota. Strong. Yeah, she's got such a height advantage in the lane. They were saying, at shoot-around today, Jamel Elliott was saying, you're going to get layup after layup if you're patient and strong. Genesis Parker, 4-3. Got it. Bring it up for Genesis! One of the four seniors playing their last game at Hinkle Fieldhouse today. Four Butler is on the board early. Westbrook in trouble, tied up by Atosa. Yeah, nice job by Butler to double her because Nelson Adota was open in the low post. There's the head coach of the Butler Bulldogs, Kirk Dunlevsky, in his seventh year leading this program. The East Coach of the Year back in uh, the 18-19 season. Says his team has kind of finally hit some form the last couple of games. The first times this season they've been over 70 points in scoring. Well, and they finally had time to practice, so he feels like they're, they're better prepared, they're in better condition. And one for Adika. Nice aggressive take from the junior college oh, transfer. Well, 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 the that is her first, team's first. Adika at the line to complete the three-point play. Yeah, a little yeah, body right contact there. there. Okay. That's where it is. So Okako Adika, who scored 18 points on 7 of 11 shooting. Remember, the Bulldogs only scored 35 in the whole game in January at Campbell. She's got six already in this one. Here's Westbrook. Yes. That's going to be open all day. The skip pass from the corner over to, to Beckers and then the nice dribble penetration and kick. Avita Westbrook, only one of her last 17 for three, but she's got one here. Parker drives. Shot from outside for three. Goes by Ellen Ross. That was a great drive there by Parker and the smart kick. Two-point ball game. You see Butler shooting the ball exceptionally well to start the ball game. Ten to shoot. Mule over the top. Knocked loose by Westbrook, but fielded by Atosu. Three of four from outside for the Bulldogs. Here's Sheets. Micah oh, Sheets, the graduate student. Yeah, she had a long time to shoot that. They're playing with confidence. They got fans on their home court. And they have the lead over UConn. Westbrook. Nice strong move. And, and again, I'm going to be saying this a lot today, flashing to the middle of the lane against that zone, that's what's going to be open. UConn needs to continue to exploit that. Already passed halfway in quarter number one. The game that's featured very few stoppages and whistles so far. That's going to be an extra step taken by Sheets as she tried to pivot and find a cutting at Deco. Timeout on the floor, just over four minutes to go in quarter number one. A one point UConn lead. Hinkle Fieldhouse, where they played the Indiana High School Boys Basketball Championships from 1928 to 1971. Most famous among them, the 1954 game between Milan and Muncie Central. Of course, immortalized in the movie Hoosiers. Gene Hackman playing the leading role. One of the great movies of all time. Pretty special place on the National Register of uh, Historic Landmarks and where the UConn women's basketball team plays for the very first time ever. UConn leading Butler by just one with four to go in the first quarter. Teams shooting a combined 12 of 19 to start this ball game. Well, UConn is getting the shots they want in the lane, and they said, be patient to Nelson Adota. She's going to be trapped and double teamed, and she turned it over. Nice job by Butler. As we've seen a number of times this season, when UConn comes to town, they get the other team's best shot in this opening quarter. Here's Parker. Got it blocked from behind. Mule got a hand on the ball. Nice. Yeah, Mule was lucky to get a hand on the ball. She had been beat. Williams from the corner. No, doesn't get the bounce. Rebound wound up in the hands of Adika. 
have to be impressed with the start for Butler so far. Not only the shooting, as Beckers misses the steal. The fact that they're hanging with the Huskies. There is a shot way off the mark from Sheets. And a long rebound to Mule. Lesnar trying to post up inside. Can't handle the pass. She was off balance, and she's, I think she's frustrated thinking she's getting pushed. And there's a lot of contact down there. Leah Edwards is at the scorer's table waiting to check in. Adika throws that one up on the glass. Almost looks like she stumbled as she let it go, but it went. Three of three for Adika in the game so far. Beckers for three. And got it. I was just thinking to myself, Beckers hasn't taken a shot. And there's, you know, eight minutes into the game, she needs to be involved in the offense, but she took care of that. She called for the screen for Nelson Adota, and when the defender backed off just a step, that was all the room she needed. Adika again drives. They call her first step as she tried to put the brakes on, and Nelson Adota cut her off. Watch Paige. She puts, extends her arm and her finger, like, set the screen, and Micah Sheets was like, hey, come, come, come. And, and it was such a savvy play by the freshman to recognize the defense backed up and jack the shot. So just a two-point Husky lead as we go under two minutes to play in this quarter. Aliyah Edwards and Aubrey Griffin into the ball game for UConn. Edwards and Williams. Nice aggressive take and she'll draw the contact with a foul. And the, the key to the to this offense is you got to throw it in and then kick it out. You got to make the defense move, come in and out. Nice aggressive take by Williams, gets herself fouled. Foul on Ellen Ross, so Kristen Williams goes to the free throw line. Last four games for Kristen, 19, 21, 22, and 16 points. It's a good time for, for Kristen Williams to be playing her best basketball of her career. And the key is, like you just said, it's consistent. Game after game, she's been playing really well, scoring points, but doing more. Playing defense, rebounding. You, UConn in a zone here. To the corner and put up, around, and out. Cruel bounce for Tenley Dowell. Defended by Amelia Sexton just into the ball game. That pass knocked away by Ross. It'll be UConn's ball, 16 to shoot. With so much attention down low, throw that ball fake, and then someone's got a flash to the high post. It's wide open. Kristen Williams on the inbound play, and one. With the right hand, too, the lefty. That was a pretty play. So Ross picks up her second foul. Just see again, the middle is wide open. That was really good recognition by Williams and the smart pass from Becker. Williams adds the extra. I should say Becker's. Yes. <laughs> and the Husky lead goes out to six points. 7 0 run for the Huskies in the last minute 18. Inside a minute to go here at Hinkle. Intercepted by Beckers. Another steal, another bucket. Just really good anticipation watching the ball. You know, she's a really good team defender as well. And a long three from Nigel okay. Dew. Did not see her in the game at Gamble in January. Beckers again. Long rebound will go out of bounds and he's turned over with 20 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Becker's two of three in the ballgame, one of two from long range. And five points, leading scorer for the uh, Huskies so far is seven with Avina Westbrook currently on the bench. Getting a little break. So shot clock off. Down to 
five. Here's a Tosu, cut off by Griffin. Feeds into the paint. Back outside to Adika, throws it up. In a desperation shot, and it's no good. After being held to just single digits in two of the four quarters, back at Campbell, got to be feeling good about this if you're Butler to have 20 on UConn, but Becker's leading the way for the Huskies. They lead by five. Well, Paige Becker's closing in on a freshman record for the Huskies. You know, I mentioned last game Pam Weber had the record. I didn't look the next line down in the record book, but she and Renee Montgomery are tied. Sorry, Renee. But uh, two away from equaling that record is Becker's as we start this second quarter here at Butler. Yeah, she's already got five assists in the first 10 minutes. Sharing the ball, getting everyone involved. Williams cut off. Becker's back inside. Edwards bounced around. Four players around her. Three seconds. Three seconds. For three seconds. Well, Butler is a much better basketball team today than they were the first time yeah. these two teams played back in December. Number one, they've had a lot of time to practice and they've just gotten better. And they're doing a really good job defensively, taking away the inside. Official signal she didn't turn it over. She just it grabbed it. It looked like a top. carry. It did look like a carry. <laughs> Atosu. Four three. <laughs> This is a team that was devastated by both COVID and injuries at the beginning of the season. So getting a break in the schedule after trying to make up all the missed games and getting players back. We're seeing a couple of players today in their starting lineup. We did not see in January. There's Beckers. Right, fought for the rebound by Edwards off her and turnover to Butler. Traditionally, UConn has never loved playing against zones. But when you're playing against someone who's shooting the ball so well, like Butler is, yeah. it just obviously makes it so much more difficult. Give Butler all the credit. Just some numbers to make that last graphic make sense. Butler shot six of 24 from three in the January game. Nice pass, Parker. Taken away by Aliyah Edwards. Huskies run. Becker's all the way in. Floater, good. That's where UConn is so dangerous. They get the ball up the floor in a hurry. Genesis Parker settles it down. Here, Kirk Kudlewski yelling. Shot from Otosu off the mark. Edwards will get fouled as she possessed the rebound. Tenley Dowell will get charged with that one. UConn shooting 37.5% from three in this ball game. That's actually just a tick above their season average. Somehow it doesn't feel that way, does it? Aubrey Griffin. Ball is going to be out of bounds off Leah Edwards. Off the miss, and it'll be another turnover to Butler. Man, you can not looking crisp offensively, but again, you got to give credit to Butler. Becker's just got away with a foul, wow. Dumps it down to Williams, who gets it in. Three players in the front court with the defensive pressure, broken by Butler. Tosu feeds Dew, who gets the bucket for three. And that's the best way to handle a press when you can knock down a three. Against zone, uh, full court press, that is devastating to the defense. Another Aaron pass intercepted. Parker puts it up over the outstretched Aubrey Griffin and missed wildly. I don't know if Aubrey got a piece of it or not. Good defensive retreat by Butler. Mule to Beckers. No. And that's going to be a foul on Aubrey Griffin over the back. Well, it's still no Adamakarat in the UConn lineup. Makarat has been out now for the last 11 games. Gino said uh, it'd be nice to get her back for the Big East tournament coming up in another week or so. Yeah, they just, uh, they just took the air cast off of her leg. She had a stress fracture, so... She's been running and, and more active, and they need her. Another three, that one from Dowell. 
That's now four straight buckets from long range for Butler. And they're shooting great. And they're playing light. They get nothing to lose. Three of five from three in this quarter are the Bulldogs. Nelson to go to back in the game. Down to Edwards. And in. And if UConn is patient offensively, they will get that layup every single possession. See the points in the paint very lopsided. But it makes for a close game if you shoot twos and they shoot threes. Yeah. Parker left alone, missed the shot. Inside to Nelson Adota, who tries to feed Edwards. It went off her foot and out of bounds. And that's, and that's exactly what they talked about at shoot around. You have to have patience. And when they trap you in that low post, it's going to make you hurry up. You've got to keep your poise, keep your patience, and not try to go too fast. And that's what we've, why we've seen them turn it over so much in that position. So two-point ball game here. Ross tries to go between players, back out to Adika. Dowell. Floats it up over Nelson Adota, it missed. Ewell hesitated, fired, and dropped it. Kind of the extra toe tap to set the feet. I know, when she, <laughs> when she hesitated like that, I thought, oh, that's typically not a good thing. But kudos to Mule for knocking down that three on the break. All four of her shots have been from outside. She's made two of them in the game so far. Shot clock running down. Parker will be fouled as Mule tried to get himself in front of Parker. And that will bring us to a timeout on Mule's first of the ball game. First foul, second made three for Mule. Halfway through the second quarter here at Hinkle Fieldhouse, and the story of this game so far, it's raining threes for the home team. Well, and for Butler, who typically shoots 30% from three-point range, they are eight, eight of their 10 field goals <laughs> on the afternoon are from three-point range. We see three of them right here. They've just had tremendous spacing, and Godlewski's got to love the way his kids are just coming out and playing fearlessly. How about that? Most three-point field goals allowed by UConn since January 31st, nine games ago. And we're just in the second quarter. So UConn with a five-point lead here. Genesis Parker. No. Long rebound will be fielded by Buck. Shot clock down to 10. Nelson Adota trying to knock it away from Adika, and there's going to be a foul called on Nelson Adota. That'll be her first. Nelson, the Huskies, number 20, Olivia Nelson. Adota. Nelson Adota, Williams, Mule, Beckers, and Edwards, the five in the ball game for UConn. And as I say that, here's Avina Westbrook at the uh, scorer's table to check in for Zika Mule. Avina, seven points on three of three shooting in the ball game so far. Oh, wow. That is going to be a call, foul called on Ross for a moving screen that decked Aaliyah Edwards. A very difficult thing to do. And that's going to be three fouls already on the junior from Fort Wayne. Well, what was fascinating to me was the look on her face after, the, and it was a, quite an obvious foul. Like, watch, you can see, and it's the arm, right? Like yeah. that right arm, that initiate, almost like a block in football, like initiating that contact. Yeah. And she's, her face was like, wait a minute, I didn't foul. She has taken a seat on the bench, and that is thrown away and turned over to Butler by the Huskies. Just a lack of communication between Beckers and Westbrook. Eight turnovers in the ball game for UConn to this point. <laughs> D 
Dika. And from the corner, that was Sexton. Missed. Fight for the rebound. It's going to go out of bounds off Kristen Williams and stay in the hands of Butler. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Nymer, Nymer Du, who is from uh, the southwest corner of Minnesota. Got back into the last four games and had a season high yes, last game. She's been playing great lately for Butler. Again, spent a good chunk of January injured and not able to play. Wide open sheets. Time to set the feet. Short of the shot. It's the rebound back herself. Adika over Kristen Williams. Yes. Adika. Puts her into double figures. And the parade of three-point shots from the Bulldogs continues. She's one of their best three-point shooters, 41% from behind the arc. Kristen Williams. Aliyah Edwards will draw the foul and get the bucket. Nice aggressiveness there by Edwards. We talked about her off the top of the show, of, of how persistent she is and how strong she is in the lane. That's just really good timing. Great positioning. No one there to box her out. And so the foul on Sheets, her first. And Edwards adds the extra to make the Husky lead five points. It's not like you kind of shooting poorly in the game, but uh, too too many turnovers. And Butler shooting really well. Sexton. Sheets. Shot clock at 10. Blocked. Very blocked by Edwards. Williams looking for some room. Finds Beckers. That's for three. Edwards with the rebound. And it's good. And Beckers is looking at D. Kantner. And, and D just pointed to her. I think I think Becker thought she was fouled on that shot. Edwards will foul, and Sheets will draw the extra. What a tough shot! A great finish by Sheets getting fouled by Edwards. Nice pump fake to get Edwards off her feet. She had the advantage, just a half a step. It's just upper body strength to get it up and in. So the grad student from Tennessee, who Coach Kudlewski says has a great basketball mind, adds the extra, and sheets up to six points in the ball game. And this is the only year that she's been here. She transferred in. He said it's been an outstanding year. With her. Beckers feeds Westbrook. Nicely done. And that is the record for most assists in a freshman season for a UConn player to Paige Beckers. Nice movement by Butler. Parker can't finish. Beckers kicks to Westbrook. Who drains the three? I feel like Westbrook really needed that three. Had one earlier in the game. There's another. And Westbrook, the leading scorer for the Huskies in this one, has not missed a shot yet. Five of five and two of two from three. There's a three from Sheets. Can't say enough about Butler and just how they're coming down and attacking on the offensive end. Look at those numbers for three-point shooting. Beckers with all kind of time and space. I guess this will become a three-point shooting contest, huh? Yeah. Ten points now on the game for Paige to go with nine assists. One minute. Oh, Tosu man. gets it knocked away and touches it last. It'll be UConn's ball with a minute to go in this first half. So Lee Edwards goes to the bench. Aubrey Griffin comes in. And there's the uh, there's the record, passing Renee Montgomery and Pam Weber for most assists by a freshman in program history. Yeah, this is one of many records that she will be breaking over her career. Yeah, she will. 
three from Becker. That one, no. Nice rebound by Nelson Adota. Missed, but got her own miss. Put it in and draws a foul. Nice aggressive offensive rebounding by Nelson Adota. I know mo most of the most of the players think that Paige is going to make that when she takes it. But the quick release by Nelson Adota to rebound her own miss. One shot. So Nelson Adota to the free throw line. Eight points, four of six shooting, five rebounds so far. And add another there for the Huskies. Quickly coming up to halftime, Gary Apple and Kara Walters have all the first half highlights and analysis on the UConn women's basketball halftime show presented by Ford momentarily. That is going to be a foul on Tristan Williams. No, I think it was on Avina Westbrook. On Westbrook, okay. Hand check. I saw the signal for the hand check, but I couldn't tell who she was calling about. So, Upe Atosu will go to the free throw line for Butler. And the Huskies on a little 6-0 run here over the last, uh, just less than a minute, making five of their last seven from the floor. And suddenly Butler finds themselves down by 12. After staying with UConn, really solidly through this uh, first two quarters. You can see Nelson Udoda, or rather Paige Becker's talking with the official D. Kantner. D just started cracking up. It's important to start working the officials in the right <laughs> ways as a freshman. Substitution discussion over by the UConn bench about the substitution pattern and the timing of the horn and so on. Mule back into the game for Westbrook for these final 27 seconds of the second quarter. So Mule will handle the ball as we hit 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Beckers for three. Yes. Beckers three so points. smooth. And that is going to be how the second quarter ends with Paige Beckers dropping her third three-pointer in a game that has featured threes flying in from everywhere. 17 made three-point shots between the two teams in the first half. And after going back and forth with Butler for much of these first two quarters, the Huskies find themselves with a 14-point lead going to the locker room at halftime. Hey, Gino, uh, Butler shot the ball exceptionally <laughs> well, particularly yeah. from three-point range. What adjustments would you like your team to make defensively? Um, well, one thing is we keep letting the ball get in the lane on the dribble, and then, then we overhelp. And they're just making a lot of shots right now that, you know, kids are making threes that haven't made that many all year long. So, you know, when a team gets like that, you know, it becomes contagious. But you got to do a better job of controlling the ball handler so that we don't have to help as much, um, you know, because uh, really, I mean, uh, the shots that they're the shots that they're getting are just because we're over aggressive on on the defensive end. And how about Becker's uh, offensively? She got the freshman record for assists, but shooting the ball really well, too. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, them sitting there in their zone, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to get much inside because that's going to be double teams and triple teams all the time. So we need somebody else to step up and start making a couple shots. So, I mean, the points problem, you know, we got 53. We should, we should be happy we got 53. So uh, hopefully in the second half, the defense can be a little bit better. All right, Coach, thanks. Yep. Our halftime interview with Gino, presented by P.C. Richard & Son. Well, Butler has already scored more points than they scored in the entire game at Gamble in January. The Huskies being led by Beckers and Westbrook with 13 and 12. They combine here for part of that 53 halftime show coming up. Welcome back inside Studio 31, the UConn Women's Halftime Report. It's brought to you by our local Ford stores. Gary Apple back alongside... Carol Walters, not easy in that first half for UConn. Butler shooting the lights out from downtown. They've made 10 from beyond the arc. But UConn has a girl by the name of Paige Beckers on their team. Who? 
Paige Beckers. Oh, I think I've heard of her. Now the all-time, yeah, she's <laughs> she's not bad. So not assists in that first half. The all-time freshman record for assists set by Paige in that first half. I mean, she's just fun to watch. What did you like so much about Paige in that first half? I mean, nine assists, and, and she took ten shots. So she's taking shots and sharing the basketball extremely well. She just knows. She knows giving up the good shot for the great shot. She just finds people in the right spots. It's fluid. It's in, I mean, you thought she was going to shoot the mid-range jumper. She saw oh, Kristen Williams running the floor. Talk about rewarding your players for getting up and down the floor. I mean, she does a good job of just finding people. People are moving and active. So good things are happening when people are moving because they know that Paige can get them the ball. You know, I've said before, and I think we saw it on that pass to Avina Westbrook where she was looking one way and fired it to Avina down low the other way for a layup. She is like a chess master, right? She yeah. sees the game two and three steps ahead. Yeah. Uh, she's got uh, a vision out there that very few players are blessed with. So UConn leads at the break by 14. What do they need to do better in the second half to, to break this game open a little bit? We'll take a look at that when we come back in a moment. Gary and Kara back inside Studio 31 First Half Category Leaders brought to you by your local Ford stores. And Paige Beckers leads UConn in points and assists. And Olivia Nelson, a Dota with five rebounds at the half. So it's a 14-point game. Can UConn blow this game open to the second half? That's the question. And if they are going to do that, how do they go about it? We'll take a look ahead to the second half and delve into that when we come back in a moment. So what a difference for Butler in that first half as compared to the first time these two teams played. Butler scored 39 points in the first half. In the first game when they met, they scored 35 total for the entire game. So what a difference, Kara. And they made 10 threes in that first half. How does UConn shut down Butler from beyond the arc in the second half. And literally only three people scored for Butler <laughs> right. the first time they played them and now seven or eight have scored. So I think G Gino's right. What's happening is they're having to help so much on defense because they're playing this kind of intense defense and UConn's helping so much they're leaving the outside kind of open. Plus there's some good plays where they're in their face and Butler's just knocking down crazy shots but that's got to end at some point. But I think the defense kind of not helping so much and taking care of one-on-one one -on -one defense take care of your man, keep him in front of you. That'll be a big part of They'll it. They'll be okay, I think. UConn did shoot 64% in that first half, right? I mean, they played pretty well. They scored 53 points. Karen and I will see on the post-game show, second half following a break. Be sure and tag your social media posts today about the game with the hashtag Bleed Blue. Even though fans can't be in the stands this season, we want to see UConn Nation cheering on the Huskies. 24-10 run to close the first half gives UConn a 14-point lead here at Historic Hinkle Fieldhouse with Megan Kulmo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Paige Becker's leading the way for the Huskies in both points and assists. There's a shocker, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, nine assists in, in just the first half. I mean, this kid has been on a tear over the last five games distributing the basketball. It's been fun to watch the different ways she's gotten her teammates involved, whether it's to the high post, kick it out to Westbrook for the three. You know, just a simple pass on the break to Mule, and then using the screen, and then the great pass and find inside. We'll go, now this is a good play from the first half. Now watch this. She gets the ball in the middle, right? She starts, now don't, watch Kristen Williams. Okay, now there, the defense is okay there. Watch here. The defense is in a line, right? Great, her head at the last second turns and looks. Everyone thinks she's gonna shoot it, but Kristen Williams has learned in only, you know, three quarters of a season to always be ready for the ball. A terrific pass from Beckers. That was Cuomo's court vision brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. And there she is, nine assists in four of the past five games. And you look at that line at the bottom, 43 assists, the most in the NCAA during that time. Beckers here, Brady Lupe Atoso as we start this second half. Genesis Parker starts the second half. The way it finished. What a great way for Butler to start this half with an open three from the corner. They were 8 of 14 from three to start the game, then were two of their last seven. So they started the second half off quite well on their home court. Beckers. Rebound goes to the hands of Kristen Williams. Beckers stops. Couldn't get back. I think that was blocked. 
I think Dew got a piece of it. Original starting five on the floor for both teams. There's a Tosu, got it knocked away from her by Beckers. Williams with time to set the feet. See, Beckers dr dribbled over to the right, having already seen Williams over in that left corner. Those are just some of the things that Beckers does that you, you can't teach that. She just has such great knowledge of where everyone is on the floor. Atosu out of the round and out, and Nelson Dota used her length to grab that rebound. Williams again. Over the hands of Adika. Here's Atosu trying to run. And wouldn't fall. And that her foot was on the stepped line. on the end line by two and turned over to UConn. See, she comes over to the right because she knows she's going to throw it over to Williams. Those are the little nuances to Paige Becker's game that makes her so special. We talked about the uncanny presence for a freshman. And especially in the big moments when her team needs her the most. Into Nelson Adota. Through a double team. And this, in. this was, they were working on this play earlier in shoot around. And Nelson Dota was just was sealing the kid on that back line. She was wide open and Becker's found her. He looks for some running room. Nelson Adota right there. Parker around Mule with the left hand. See, that's where Mule, I think, defensively gets herself in trouble. That's where she can't keep kids in front of her. Nice job by Parker. Timeout called by Butler. 58-44 early in this third quarter here at Hankel Fieldhouse. Fourteen point game, UConn over Butler in this third quarter. Points in the paint heavily favoring the Huskies, 28-6. And it's funny, I talked about this play that they worked at it at shoot around, but it didn't happen exactly like they worked it out but, or they talked about. But what I love is, watch, when Beckers gets the ball, right, what was supposed to happen, she's supposed to go into the lane. But what I love, the defense responded, the seal here by Nelson Adota and the savvy pass from Beckers, like, okay, she's open. Why, why make things more complicated than they have to be? Get her the ball. And at the beginning of that play, I really like, you know, Nelson Adota's out there directing traffic. Hey, go here. You go, you know, and, and seeing what was developing in front of her. Yes, and I just like how they fought on the fly. There it is again. Three players surround her. The kick out. Kristen Williams cuts. Gets cut off. And it's going to draw a foul underneath. I that's going to be on two. Number 13, It will be. That's her first. So 20-second shot clock here for the Huskies. Oh, thrown away. Ten to shoot. Decker stops and pops. That's a perfect play because that middle of the zone is what's open. Double-double land for Beckers in this one now. 15 points, 11 assists. Blocked. Williams got a hand on that from Adika. Mule with the rebound. Ahead to Beckers. Who gets it? Perfect pass from Mule. Beckers didn't even have to break stride. Remember a couple of days ago when there were some discussions about Paige should maybe being off on the shooting a little bit? <laughs> Mule misses on that one. Nelson Adota challenged and will draw a foul with three players around her. Drive of the game presented by Nissan. And a nice block by Christian Williams. We didn't see that the first time. <laughs> Trying to understand what the discussion is here. Called a foul on Adika. And then they called Olivia Nelson Adota for a technical foul. Now that's not a technical foul. 
So the, the call is, in, and Dee Kander didn't even know why the, the technical was called against Nelson Adota, but Butler gets the two free throws and then they get possession of the ball. Cheeto is seeking an explanation from Safe Esho, who made the call. Whatever explanation he got did not satisfy him, as you can imagine. <laughs> I think, yeah, did you think it would? Tosu. Adika steps back. Westbrook with the rebound for the Huskies. Lead at 16 for UConn. Nelson Adota. That was a force. That pass was a force for, from Mule. Parker, fouled by Nelson Adota and gets it to go. What a great play by Genesis Parker. The stutter step. Watch the stutter step. Nelson Adota lunged for her, ill-advised, and Parker made her pay. Related somehow to the cause of the technical earlier? We don't know. But Nelson Adota heads out of the game, and Aaliyah Edwards comes in. So three fouls for Nelson Adota sends her to the bench halfway through the quarter. Here is Genesis Parker. Ten points now for Genesis Parker. Kako Adika with 11 for Butler. Surprised she didn't shoot that ball. Westbrook in traffic. Yeah, and Gino, you could hear him scream, shoot it! When Peckers passed up that three in the corner. So Ellen Ross will pick up her fourth foul. Anavita Westbrook will go shoot free throws. 12 points for Westbrook today. Five of five from the floor. Kind of nice for a change in this season to have a little noise from the student <laughs> section when kind the opposition nice. is it's shooting heavenly. free throws. <laughs> Who knew the cheerleaders could be so raucous over there? <laughs> And uh, two for two from the line for Amina Westbrook. Just having a very solid day with the basketball. So Rosemary Dumont into the ball game for Butler. And a 16-point lead here for the Huskies. And another errant pass. Here's Mule. Huskies run. Westbrook was ahead of the pack, but Mule did not see her. Beckers tried to get it to Edwards. Saved by Williams. Beckers calls offense. Mule. Beckers with the rebound. The Huskies will get a fresh 20-second shot clock. A foul call underneath. A little jostling for position on Edwards, and I believe that will be Dumont, who just entered the game. Freshman from Quebec City, Canada. So again, 20 seconds for the Huskies to shoot. Beckers, no. Good box out by Dumont to get the rebound away from Westbrook. One of three from outside, three of nine from the floor in this third quarter, and there's a steal from Westbrook, which should be fouled. She will be fouled by Atopu, and that will bring us to the media timeout, halfway through quarter number three. Huskies only adding two to their advantage this quarter, but the advantage is 16. Gino Oriama, the head coach, joins us now from Portside. I thought we were joining the Big East. I didn't realize we were joining the Catholic League South. <laughs> How much does Becker's not being here impact your offensive flow? She's our best passer and our best shooter. Uh, so other than those two things, uh, she doesn't impact us at all. <laughs> Told you guys we sucked on defense. You didn't want to believe me, did you? She's got to channel back to our six, late 60s and 70s. You know, we just got to find ourselves. Our best defense was stand in the zone and you'll miss. So, you know, they obliged. Just got to 
go to that place where we can find ourselves. <laughs> well, maybe you can go in there in the locker room and find your happy place. But there's a cabinet in my office that has my happy place. <laughs> so not exactly in the locker room. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Coach. you got to admit, it's been entertaining. <laughs> Always is. Yeah. The head coach, the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema. Watching his Husky team here at Butler with a 16-point lead in their first trip to the field house. Sabina Westbrook at the free throw line. One. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because watching the team grow, watching the coach adapt and figure it out, figure out how this team needs to be coached over the course of the season. Foul on the floor as Edwards tried to get the rebound. And that's going to be Dumont again. Yeah, I, I, I'll borrow your phrase that you said a couple times this year. He's coaching his brains out. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, he's got a young team. There's no seniors. You know, there's so many freshmen who are impacting the, the game. It's just fun to watch this season evolve and the adjustments and, and everything involved in it. It's always a lot of fun to be along for the ride. Coach and company looking for a shot of the 12th national championship. Business to take care of first here today at Butler and Monday night at Gamble against Marquette. As they look to finish Biggie's play undefeated for this season, Aliyah Edwards converting both of her free throws. Got to put her up at nine points on the ball game for the freshman. Here's Parker. She's going to get fouled on the floor. <laughs> and that call was the, I think because Godlewski was, was really working for it. Well, that is his job. Well, so. yeah, he helped the official to see some things that maybe they wouldn't have seen without his encouragement. Like a good pair of glasses. There you go. So Nika Mule goes to the bench with uh, her second foul. Aubrey Griffin into the ball game for UConn. And by the way, every coach works, works the refs. Parker on Griffin, steps back. Tantalizing bounce, rebound goes to Griffin. cruel at home, that should go in. Westbrook cut off, but nice step into some clear area for Becker. The shot wouldn't go, the rebound knocked out of bounds off Griffin. That was just a really smart decision by Beckers to get into the lane where there was an opening and a good pass from West Westbrook. Beckers just couldn't get it to drop. We've seen a lot of Aubrey Griffin today. Just six minutes on the court in this one. No help here. No help here. The sheets. There's Griffin announcing her presence. On cue. Westbrook. Griffin with the rebound. Williams. No. And there is a lid on the hoop. Butler Coach Godlewski hollering for his team. Pick up the pace. Parker will throw that one up and will draw contact. It's going to be on Leah Edwards. That's her second team's that, That's impressive. To, get, to nearly get by Aubrey Griffin. He shows you how quick Parker is. So Dumont to the bench and due back in for Butler. And here is Genesis Parker playing her last game here at uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse. In that really bad game for Butler up at Gamble Pavilion back in January, she was the only Butler player who played in the game who did not turn the ball over a single time. And they, and they wanted, you know, some payback for that game. Not for anything other than they just wanted to, to play better. And and they certainly have. Yeah, Coach Goodlefs, he told us when we talked to him yesterday that, you know, he came back and looked at the film as Christian Williams launches a three and makes it. He said, look at the film, and the competitor in him got angry. Yeah. He said, but you know, we can do, do this. Yeah, they did do some good things, and, and they're doing a lot of good things here today. Husky lead grows to 19, though, on the Kristen Williams. Big three. No field goals in the last two and a half minutes for Butler. Tosu guarded by Griffin. Launches a three. No. Right to the hands of Westbrook. Aubrey Griffin ahead of the pack. 
Keith Williams, but is going to get called for the offensive foul. As Sheets got there. Yeah, that was a smart play by Sheets. I mean, you can see Sheets. Look at her. Now she's running under. And had a foot inside she that restricted area. She did have a foot inside that restricted area, which should have nullified that call. But I appreciate her effort. Good thing with a block. Tosi wanted a foul, didn't get the call. Westbrook leads the Huskies with numbers, dumps it to Edwards, gets it in. Double figures for Aaliyah Edwards now. One, two, three, four, five Huskies in double figures. Largest lead of the ball game for UConn, 21 points. Running down, here's Dowell. Alden Griffin pulled back, anticipating the contact. Dowell missed. Westbrook. Edwards with the rebound and a foul. Give Edwards all the credit for the hustle. That's just effort and wanting it more than anybody else. I mean, it was such a nice play by Westbrook. Use that left hand, it'll go in. But look at the effort. Gotta love it. You know, Davina Westbrook has had an impact on the score sheet in a major way in this game, and so has Aaliyah Edwards now. Five of five from the floor. And four of four from the free throw strike. I like how you didn't say that before she took the shot. I'm learning. <laughs> back into the ball game for Butler. 8-0 run here for UConn, 12-2. Feet outside from the corner, Dowell, no. Nobody there but blue jerseys for the rebound. Things have certainly cooled off from outside in this second half for the Bulldogs, just one of five in the second half. Griffin, directed by Westbrook, couldn't get the shot. Parker pitches it up. Off everything right to Kristen Williams. Beckers from Westbrook. And contact and bodies on the floor underneath. That is going to be on Butler. That is going to be on Tenley Dowell following Leah Edwards. It's been physical in that low post. I like the way these teams are competing. So Edwards back to the free throw line for her fifth free throw attempt on the day. She's approaching double-double territory, by the way. 14 points, eight rebounds for Edwards. Last 10 games for the freshman from Canada. 49 of 69 from the floor, 70%. And it'll only go up after today. Dropping both ends of the free throws. And putting her up to 15, 16 points in the game now. Paige Beckers to the bench for a spell, and Nika Mule back into the ball game for UConn. 26 point lead on a 10 0 run over the last two and a half minutes. The Bulldogs just making one of their last 10 shots after raining threes down from everywhere in the first half. And to shoot. Adika. To Dowell. Good, Good rebound by Aubrey Griffin. UConn looks to create some pace here. Westbrook from way outside. And Parker will slow it down as the shot clock is off. We're down to the final 15 seconds of quarter number three here at Hinkle. from way outside. Yes! Genesis Parker! Genesis Parker caps the third quarter with a long three to break a long dry spell for the home team. Well, it is the final home game for the four seniors on the Bulldog squad. Parker with an exclamation point shot to end the third.
ready for the fourth quarter here at Hinkle Fieldhouse in our game reset presented by Town Fair Tire. Paige Beckers with a double-double and uh, five Huskies in double figures in scoring in this one. Genesis Parker leading the way for the Bulldogs and uh, for Paige Beckers, she's done about everything you could have asked her to do today. Well, again, she's so good at reading the defense and calling for the screen and then the defense backed up so she shot it. The nice finish on the run and here the savvy pass dribbling right and tossing it back left and toyota gives us a look at most points in the first 20 career games as a yukon husky Paige beckers with 399 through 20 games she is nine points away from passing katie lou samuelson for 10th place in all-time freshman scoring for yukon Figuring another, if they get another 10 games and she averages 20 or so a game, she could get as high as second on that freshman scoring list. Maya Moore's got a number that is amazing. 678 points as a freshman for Maya Moore. There's Buell. That's three for her as a freshman. She's getting more confident, more consistent with her long range shot. Three of six from outside today for you. Tosu on Beckers. Parker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She likes that spot. <laughs> Top of the key. She loves it. Couple, couple before rattled around and rattled around and then fell out. That one fell in. Beckers gets fouled on the way by Dowell. And that'll be her third. Yeah, Richard, freshman from Milton, Illinois, picking up the foul. Kirk Kovlevsky, you know, the result's not going to be what he wanted, but compared to the way the game was in January, as that shot from Nelson Adota rattled out, uh, a much better performance for this Butler team. Well, and, yeah, and I think he knew it would because he knew that they've gotten a lot better because they've had a lot of good practices and good practice time. And they're competitors, and they're a great group of kids who've handled this crazy season really well. Trying to go back to what worked for him in the first half, but the threes aren't falling at the same rate they were in the first half. Williams with plenty of time to set the feet. That was pretty good ball movement, too, by UConn. Box out for the rebound by Butler. Another long range. That one missed. Williams got behind the defense and will draw a contact on a foul on the floor from Odika. And that will be her second foul. So 24 on the shot clock as Becker's inbounds to Edwards. The clock's out by Odika. Dowell. Nelson Adora lost her balance in some of the jostling underneath. And Beckers almost came in and stole that pass. Adora sets the screen, directing traffic. Edwards to Nelson Adora. Draws the foul. That was a terrific play, and, and Aliyah Edwards made that possible with her flash to the elbow. They worked on it a lot. See, it's wide open up there. That drew the defense away, and that allowed that one-on-one -on -one down low with Nelson Adota. So that quickly now the third foul on Adiga. It'll be Nelson Adota on the day today. 11 points, 5 of 8 shooting, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 fouls, including a technical. Which we are still unsure of, of why she got it. Aaliyah Edwards with the strong rebound and the reverse up and in. The freshman just keeps getting better and better. One rebound shy of a double-double for Aaliyah Edwards. Here's a Tosu on Beckers, and Beckers will be called for a foul. Nice aggressive take by a Tosu. Oh, so, Ube Tosu from Nigeria. 
who was a junior college first team All-American two years ago. This is now her second year at Butler. Trying to finish the season strong. Had a career high Monday against Xavier. 23 points. That one rattles in. Has struggled shooting today. Just uh, one of nine from the floor and one of five from outside. But the free throw stripe has been particularly good to her. Yeah, and she's the heart of this team. The foundation. She does so much for them, particularly on the defensive end. Williams wide open. Edwards with the strong rebound, and they'll kick it back out and reset. Beckers on the nice pass from Ewell, and that's a triple. Beckers was relieved that that one went in. She had gone a bit cold. Four of ten from three now for Beckers. Ross back into the game, defended by Nelson Adoda, and there's going to be a foul called on Nelson Adoda there. That'll be her fourth. And I think that... Wait, oh, no, no, that, you know, yeah, that was an offensive foul. Ross led with that right elbow. I, I thought Nelson Adota had done a good job of just establishing her position. And then they bumped, and then Ross got aggravated and came in pretty aggressive with the right arm. So that is the fifth foul for Ellen Ross, and she will exit the ball game. So you'll see it here. Watch. All right, you know what? In fairness, uh, Nelson Adota did bump her a little bit. And... and I, I actually, I, I feel bad that she fouled out on that play, but she was trying to get the kid off her. Mule defended by Parker, throws it away. Atosu will have a run out. And miss it. Not a lot of Huskies back on defense. Dumont runs the floor and misses that. Gino has this look on his face like, what just happened there? How come there were no blue jerseys back, running back on that? Nelson Adota from the free throw line, no. That was a great play, though, to flash right there. 10 feet, quick, quick shot, I like the play. Five of nine from the floor today. As Adika goes into the lane, feeds Dumont, who's defended well, and Edwards comes away with the ball. Mule to Beckers, back to Edwards, and the freshman connection on that one. Yeah, that was the future right there. Can we get a pool going? How many times I'll connect those three names going forward? Nice play by uh, Matosu. Twenty-four point UConn lead, only outscoring Butler by a single point in this quarter so far. Nelson Adota will take an extra step. Oh, so subs as Aubrey Griffin comes into the game for Olivia Nelson Adota. Parker will exit the game for Butler. And now Avina Westbrook quickly also, running to check in for Kristen Williams. Williams. Aaliyah Edwards, all of a sudden, all, I mean, it feels like all of a sudden in this quarter, has 20 points and 10 wow. rebounds. She's, she's just relentless. Well, it also helps. It also helps me when you don't miss a shot. She's been perfect. Yeah. Good pass outside to Atika, who drops the three. For three points. One of the things that Kurt Godlewski wanted to see from his Butler team was to play for all 40 minutes. Oh, no, no look pass to Westbrook and banks it in. What great movement without the ball by Westbrook. Yes, a great pass from Mule. But it doesn't happen if Westbrook doesn't sneak along that baseline. Do some traffic and a foul called in the lane. That'll be Beckers. That'll be her third and lead us to a timeout halfway through quarter number four. Aliyah Edwards, Nika Mule, Paige Beckers back to Edwards for two over 20.
Four and a half to go here at Butler and UConn with an 88-65 lead. Aaliyah Edwards has had a second half and an all-around great ball game. Well, you know, she's she's always there on the boards. She runs the floor and she finishes. I mean, she's so reliable. There's the pretty pass from Beckers, but she's reliable because she just she finishes and she makes the right plays. I mean, she's got 20 points, 10 rebounds. She's seven of seven from the floor. At halftime, Aaliyah Edwards had seven points, five rebounds. Then a great second half. Quite a her. second half. So Ube Atosu at the free throw line for Butler. Atosu in the ball game with 10 points, mostly from the free throw line. She's shooting now her eighth free throw. She's two of 11 from the floor, but six of eight now from the strike. Defensive pressure here by the Bulldogs, broken quickly by the Huskies. Westbrook, Beckers, the three, doesn't go. Edwards with a strong rebound, and up and in. Again, relentless. Ali Edwards on the boards. Leading scorer in the ball game, leading rebounder in the ball game for the Huskies, Aliyah Edwards. Tosu gets that one to go. That's a great shot by Tosu. Beckers was in her face. Just her second made three of the ball game. Weren't with us earlier. Bulldogs were raining threes in pretty solidly in the first half, shooting the lights out. Huskies able to alter that trajectory much better in this second half. There's Westbrook. It doesn't fall. Tosu blocked by Griffin, who gets tied up by Dumont. And the possession arrow will keep the ball in Butler's hands. That's just the spectacular athleticism of Aubrey Griffin to get that block. Look at some of the numbers on Paige Beckers tonight. Those 13 assists tie the program record for most assists in a game. It's been done four times. The last? Oh, Renee Montgomery, Renee Montgomery. was the last one. You got substitution 13, Williams. 11.30.08 was the date. So Nika Mule heads for the bench with 3.08 to go. Nine points, three of six from outside for Mule in this game. Due defended by Edwards. Parker. Launches the long three. That is not long enough and a turnover to UConn. Gary Apple and Kara Walters have a full recap of today's game, plus Gino Auriemma's post-game news conference will be able to be heard on the UConn Women's Basketball post-game show coming up shortly here on SNY. Under three minutes to go here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Paige Beckers to Aaliyah Edwards. There is the single game record for assists for Paige Beckers. Ninety-two, sixty-eight Huskies. Hugh knocked away by Westbrook, but goes to Sheets. Near corner, Sexton. No. Edwards with a rebound. Westbrook brings it back out, runs a little clock. Here's Aaliyah Edwards, who scored a career-high 24 points so far tonight. Beckers from outside, no. Rip in for the rebound. Wow. Another fabulous rebound by Audrey Griffin. Under two minutes to go. The drive by Westbrook, the high floater, no. She was looking for a foul call, did not receive one. Still great game for, for uh, Westbrook tonight, today. 16 points. Here is Parker, missed everything, wanted a foul call, also did, did not get it. Deckers to Westbrook. Nodding to Griffin, get in the lane. She feeds Edwards, no. They reset. Westbrook, no. And right back in the hands of Griffin. 
See if the third time can be the charm on this possession for the Huskies. As we get down to one minute to go, and Gino will ask for substitutions to be made. Ali Edwards exits the ball game, and Piaf Gabriel comes in. And that pass right there with Edwards converting was the assist that gave Paige Beckers the, the record of 14 assists. In a single game. We will see her name in the Yukon record books a lot, I believe, over these next uh, three years and some. So Beckers will exit the ball game as Mule will come back in. P.F. Gabriel came in and Aliyah Edwards exited. Edwards with a career high in points and rebounds today. And as we get down to the final minute or so of this ball game, uh, this is our last telecast on SNY for this season. And just want to give a big shout out and thanks to Anna Labonte, the sports oh, information director the for yeah. UConn Women's Basketball. To say this has been an unusual season and having to make unusual arrangements would be mild. And it's been phenomenal. And all of us at SNY greatly appreciate it. Kristen Williams, 4 3 at the clock. Dew from way outside. And Griffin with the rebound. Fights through the traffic. Now, under a minute to go. Also, want to give a. There's Gabriel. Nice spin to the left. Nice finish inside. Gets the team up off the bench cheering. Want to give a big thank you to our SNY crew. Yeah, talk about the best. Our crew at Gamble, our crew that's traveled on the road throughout the season. Producer Gerard Gilfoyle, John DeMarsico, our director. Eddie, Tommy. John Moore, who's jumped in as director here in this last part of the season. Everybody, terrific. And uh, thank you all so much for uh, a wonderful season. And so there it is. 17-0, 20-1 on the season for the Huskies. Their first trip to Hinkle Fieldhouse results in a 97-68 win over Butler with five different Huskies scoring in double figures on the day. Gino, thanks for joining us here. Uh, congrats on the win. Second half, you guys nice. played much better defensively, but, but talk a little bit about the play of your freshmen and how strong they are at this point in the season. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, when you see Aaliyah play, you just, uh, you know, you can't, you know, you can't not be impressed by her work ethic, you know, how hard she how hard she competes, you know, every possession, whether it's offensively, defensively, uh, you know, going after every rebound. You know, the kid just has a heart for the game, you know, and she plays, um, you know, like a big guy supposed to play. She plays big. And, you know, Paige is Paige, is Paige you know, when um, uh, when she touches the ball, something pretty good is going to happen most of the time. But, um, yeah, I mean, going into, you know, first week in March, um, you know, I, I, I like where our freshmen are an awful lot. Hey, this is our last broadcast, so we thank you for everything. But I, want to, I wanted to ask you, where do you think your team is right now heading into March? Um, I don't know. I mean, we still have a lot of work to do, as you can see. Uh, there, there are times when defensively, you know, we're just, we're just not very good. You know, we don't make good decisions or, you know, um, and, and we struggle, you know, at times. Um, you know, with, with some ball movement against um, against some teams that just sit back in the zone. And, you know, and, and then in the second half, you see when we get great ball movement, you know, we're fine. We're just inconsistent when it comes to that stuff. But, um, you know, we got a couple days to, well, we got game Monday night, which would be a big game, obviously. Uh, and then we'll have a couple days to get, get ourselves ready for next weekend. But uh, I don't think anybody feels like... Um, you know, any team in the country feels like, you know, wow, you know, we're in perfect, perfect shape, perfect situation going into the postseason. Coach, from everybody at SNY, thanks for doing these and thanks for a great season so far. Good luck the rest of the way. Oh, thank you guys for everything and uh, everybody back in, in New York and uh, in the truck and everybody that worked so hard to put these things together. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Thanks, Coach. Gino Oriema, after his team's 97-68 win over Butler today here in... 
historic Hinkle Fieldhouse. Meg, let's ask you the same question you just asked Gino. Heading into March, where do you think this team stands? You know, I, I, I might disagree with him a little bit. I think they look really good. I mean, t to his point, you know, no one, I think, is at an any perfect kind of level, but I, I love their flow. I love the way they're attacking better on offense. Defensively, they're strong. I mean, they made the adjustments they had to make. I just like the way everyone seems to be coming together and playing better. They're shooting better. I think, and, and they've got great confidence right now, too. Yeah, big difference in these last three weeks, and uh, it'll be fun to see going forward. So today, five Huskies in double figures on their first trip to uh, Indianapolis since winning the national championship here in 2016. Aliyah Edwards leading the way as UConn beats Butler. We're coming right back. Today's players of the game, plural, presented by Cadillac. Couldn't pick between them, so let's go with both Paige Beckers and Aaliyah Edwards. Look at the numbers. 20 and 14 for Paige, 24 and 14 for Aaliyah Edwards as the Huskies beat Butler 97 to 68 today to run their record to 20 and 1 on the season and 17 and 0 in Big East play. Don't forget, uh, SNY is going to have March 18th of Thursday. Our complete breakdown of the Huskies' attempt at a 12th national championship. It's the UConn Women's Tournament Preview Show. That's March 18th at 6.30 p.m. For Megan and our entire crew here in Indianapolis, Alan Bestwick saying goodbye for now. Back in a minute. First, let's go to New York. Gary Apple and Carol Walters with the postgame show. All right, Alan, we thank you. And again, we will be back to you and Meg in just a moment. Let's begin with the freshmen. How rare is it to see the sort of production? I mean, Leah Edwards had a tremendous second half. Uh, Paige Beckers was Paige Beckers. But yeah. to see the freshmen doing what they're doing at this point in the season, how do you how do you put that into perspective? Aaliyah Edwards was a beast. That's the only yes, way I'd describe I her tonight. I mean, the confidence that they're exuding right now, they are not playing like freshmen. They say, my role is to help this team. I don't care what grade I'm in. I'm here to help this team do whatever I can. And boy, I love, I love, I love Aaliyah Edwards brings her hard hat and her pail every day and just gets it done. She's aggressive. And then obviously we know what Paige Beckers can do, but it's almost like Paige's confidence has rubbed off on the other freshmen. Yes. They're like, oh, okay, we don't have to be seniors to bring this energy and to bring this, you know, and all of a sudden, Ali has gotten on board, and, the, you know, let's not put a category in it. We're not a class. We're a UConn player, and we're going to help this team win. It's really exciting to see young players do what this yeah. team is doing right now. And you mentioned Paige Becker. She almost had another triple-double. Uh, she had 20 points in the game, 14 assists, 7 rebounds, set a record. Most assists in a game for a UConn player. Not a freshman. A UConn player, she had 14 assists. Four others had done it in the past. But uh, the superlatives, we've spoken about her at, at, at such length this season, yeah. but you can't say enough things. What impressed you the most about what you saw from Paige today? Well, I, I just love that. I mean, she still got her shots in, right? She still took 21 shots, so she was involved with the offense. I like that you're seeing both sides of Paige because we know she can pass the ball. I mean, it's amazing how she passes the ball. It's not like somebody is open, I'm just going to do it. She's smart. She takes people to one side and sees the her teammate out of the corner of her eye all the way on the other side. She's smart. So she's just, her basketball IQ is so, so, so high. And I just love the way she makes passes, the precision on her passes, the threading the needles, the get it up high to Olivia Nelson Adota, but get it lower to this player. So she is definitely the type of player, like you said, she's thinking two plays ahead. And uh, she's just so, well, how lucky will we be to cover her and for four years? I mean, this is a tremendous player and a total unselfish team player. And she now has most assists by a freshman in a season uh, in a UConn uniform, which is, which is amazing. So, you know, she came out of high school with such acclaim. <laughs> we talked about the fact that she was one of, uh, I think, two women in the history of the game who have been on the cover of Slam yeah. Magazine, the number one ranked recruit in America coming out of Hopkins, Minnesota. So we knew she was a good player, yeah. but how many times does a player, you know, come out with a 
claim and not live up to the billing, and she has lived up to the yeah. billing. Is there anything that she does better than you thought she was going to do as a freshman? Well, I, I just think the, you know, kind of like I said before, the taking it to the basket. I think she's done a better job. We knew she was a shooter coming in. Um, I, you didn't know how she could handle the physicality of the game. It's right. very different. You could be really good in high school, and then to make the jump to college, it's a very different game. And she's made it clearly seamlessly. She's handled how physical it is. She's getting inside. She's doing the same things as far as being unselfish. But I just think watching her all around game, the confidence, the, the getting to the basket and then kicking it out. I mean, I, we knew she was good. But again, that's high school. When you move up to a completely different level, it doesn't always translate. It translated loud and clear for Paige I, I, would, I would say it is translated. Let's, let's go back to the Midwest right now, back out to Hinkle Fieldhouse. Welcome back in, Alan and Meg. And uh, Meg, I don't want to date you here, but you've been around the program <laughs> a while, like Kara She's has. A married, she's a married woman. I, I understand, but I think, it, I think it's good that you can add some historical perspective here on Paige and what we're seeing and the way she stacks up against other freshmen, other players. Let's not even make it freshmen, but other players that point. have worn the UConn uniform. Uh, weigh in on that for us. That's a good point, uh, Gary, because, you know, there's so many things that she does that does remind me of other players. Like her, her pull up on the, on the move reminds me of Sue Bird. And we've talked about this um, earlier in the season. But one thing that she does that reminds me of, of Diana Tarazi is that not only the way she can score and pass, but it's almost her will to make sure everybody on the team and, and on the floor is happy and getting what they need. That's something that Diana Tarazi did and still does and is the best in the world at what she does. And I see a lot of that with Paige Beckers. And so it goes beyond just being able to score and distribute the basketball, but she makes everyone better with the way she passes, but also in what she gives them that they need. And she is smart enough to know what they need. And it's fascinating to watch already just, you know, in February of her freshman year. There's an energy that comes with her, not just on the court, but off the court. I mean, you see it in the interviews, right? There's just an energy around Paige Beckers that for a freshman is, is way beyond her years. And it is special. It is different. And it's a lot of fun to watch. Alan, you both spoke about the development of Leah Edwards in the pregame. Now, I mean, fantastic game by her. Do you think she's kind of further along than where you thought she would be? Is she going to have to contribute more than you ever thought she was going to? You know, I, I, Carrie, you never know what you're going to get from a freshman, right? Yeah. But when, when Gino says she can be an impact player at both ends of the core every day, makes you stop and go, well, that's pretty big. And she's done that. She's turned into an impact player. And I think it took a little while not just to find her footing, with this team, but remember, you had Olivia Nelson Adota there already. So carving out minutes and roles, and she's she's grown incredibly much in the second half of this season, and she's going to be a force. Well, she yeah, and she already is a force. And Kara, you've used the word beast. I've used the word beast, and and we mean that in the most complimentary way because she can't be stopped in there, and she yet yeah, she's a little bit you know she's still young and she's still learning and growing but she will be an unstoppable force in due time such a big part of what UConn's looking to do here as they move into the month of March and then uh, looking to cut down the nets, which is what the, the ultimate goal is at UConn. Uh, Alan and Meg, this is our final broadcast of the season here on SNY, and I know Kara and I sit in the studio here and listen to your broadcast, as we all do. And uh, just a tip of the hat, uh, terrific work once again. It's a pleasure to listen to your broadcast, and we enjoy them so very much. Thank you, guys. We love coming, going back and forth with you, that's for sure. We do. We have a great crew here, as you know, a great yes. team at SNY, and, uh, and it's been a blast. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you Thanks, soon. We'll guys. see you down the road as we uh, bring it back inside right now. And I, I know you're the, the president, I've said it before, of the Leah, <laughs> the Leah Edwards fan club. But when this season began, and I think you hit it on the head when you threw it out to Ellen and Meg right there, um, what is expected of her and what has been expected of her, and I think when this season began, I don't think we had any idea yeah. she was going to play this big a role. And as they go forward here, 
I know you think they're a better team with her on the floor and that she needs to be on the floor more. I think she had a lot of pressure taken off of her because of Paige Beckers, right? Mm -hmm. So all this attention is Paige, Paige, Paige. And Aaliyah's like, I'm just going to do my thing over here. And that's what she did. I mean, that's what she does best. The energy, the commitment, the running the floor, the slashing, the rebounder, the beast in the nicest way possible. It's so complimentary, as <laughs> Megan right. said. Um, she just does. It, you know what, Karen? Megan's right. I think the difference between this freshman class and others is they make people around them better where other freshman classes, usually you're holding them by the hand and saying, okay, this is what we're going to do now. And they're making people around them better. And I think that's a rare thing because, you know, Ali is bringing that energy and that intensity at the rim to like, go get the ball. And then Paige is directing traffic. And so to me, I think overall, that's kind of the theme there, right? They're making people better around them when normally you're trying to pull, you know, the hand of the freshman and say, come on, catch up. But uh, yes, Ali Edwards, what she brings, the physicality to the game. And it's so funny because we've listened to her before, right? And she's so sweet yes. and like soft yes. spoken. And you get her on the court. <laughs> she's, she's a, a beast. <laughs> she's a different story. So a big, big, big day and night for Leah Edwards, for Paige Beckers, and for the UConn Huskies, now 20-1 and on the season, still unbeaten 17-0 in the Big East. They are the number one team in the land for a very good reason. Before we head for a break here, guys, it's tonight's SNY Fan Choice. We're asking you which UConn player has exceeded your expectations the most this season. Leah Edwards, Paige Beckers, Nika Mule, or Olivia Nelson Adota. And after today... Where's my... Where's my phone as the president of the fan club. Yes. I need to vote for Aliyah Edwards. <laughs> well, a lot of people have already. She's at 52% and running away with it. So there you go. Uh, you can go to SNY.TV slash vote to participate. We'll update you on the results coming up later on our post game show. So Kara and I just getting going here on our post game broadcast. When we come back, we're going to hear from Paige Beckers. We'll hear from the Hall of Famer Gino Oriama and complete game highlights as UConn rolls over Butler. They put five in doubles, 97 to 60. And we're back in a moment. It's Gary Apple and Carol Walters back inside Studio 31. Complete game highlights. Number one, UConn taking on Butler and Kara out of the gate. The Bulldogs feeling it from downtown. Yeah, I mean, there was no pressure on them, right? They weren't supposed to win this game, and early and often, they knocked it down. They hit 10 threes in the first half. Why did that happen? <laughs> I think it was the rotation, but some of them, the UConn was in their face, and they still knocked it down. And then UConn began to go to work. What a pass there by Paige Beckers. I think Paige has eyes in the back of her head because that's really impressive. Spotting Avina Westbrook, who knocks down the three. Beckers, nine assists in the first half, standing alone for most assists by a freshman in a UConn season, it is hard to believe what she has done. And then Beckers from three, UConn led by 14 at the break in the third quarter, up 16. Kristen Williams going to get it done on the defensive end. And we've talked about defense turning into offense. Yes, and Kristen Williams doing a good job there, getting it done the defensive end. And guess what? Paige gets the ball now. They, they were all like, thank you for all your passes, Paige. We're going to reward you. Yes, indeed. She had 20 in the game, and there's Kristen Williams. She had another solid game. She's been playing so much better in recent days. She had 15 points under a minute later. Beckers to Westbrook to Aaliyah Edwards. I love the interior passing. It's so great. Even though they're close together, they recognize the open spot and get it right to him. I thought that was a great move by Avina Westbrook. She just misses it, and then the beast comes in. We'll have to ask her if it's okay to call her that, I, but I, like I, that. I think that's a great compliment. I think so, too. Aaliyah Edwards, the beast. Yes. I'm not sure at the start of the year if you said, oh, hey, you're a beast. <laughs> she would have liked that. But I it's... think she'd take it as I would. I would take it as a compliment. It is a compliment. Yeah. It's, it's said in the most complimentary way as UConn gets the win 97-68 again. They put uh, five players into double figures. Aaliyah Edwards had 24. Paige Beckers had 20. Here's Paige short time ago with Alan and Meg. Paige Becker is joining us now post-game here at uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse. Paige, you set the single-game record for assists in a ball game in the UConn program history, and you broke the mark for most assists in a freshman season today. Feel pretty good out there? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I didn't make any shots, so <laughs> I had to do something. So, I mean, getting my teammates involved and getting them open looks was really what I was trying to do. <laughs> well, Paige, we were joking about it at shoot around today. I want to talk about your defense because I think you're a really good defensive player. Uh, does your coach feel the same? <laughs> no, I mean, it's just it's kind of a 
thing where people have talked about how bad my defense is. So they kind of just have that assumption. But I think I've gotten better um, individually and uh, just on ball and off ball defender. So I give him crap about it all the time. But <laughs> he just has this like stone cold idea that I'm not a good defender. But I think I've changed. <laughs> Paige, something feels different about this team, maybe this last three weeks or so after that Georgetown game. What feels different to you in this stretch run? Uh, I think we're playing with a lot more energy and a lot more sense of urgency. We know that it's starting to come tournament time. I mean, our last regular season game is on Monday, so we know that there's no more time for lackadaisical um, effort and energy. Um, and we have to get everything right now because um, in March it's going to be too late. Thanks for this, and congratulations on a great game, Paige. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Paige. Thank you. Well, she is confident, there's no question. And she's yeah. got such a, a, a good way about her, right? Uh, I mean, she's not afraid uh -uh. to go back at Gino a little bit. She, it, honestly, the relationship reminds me of Diana Taurasi and Gino. Like, Interesting. Diana could say things and give him a pat on the butt, and he would, <laughs> I, could, I would never imagine trying to do that back in the day. But they have that relationship, and it's based on trust. He trusts her early on as a freshman. That's quite uh, the compliment and respect that he has for her that, they can have that relationship that he does with Diana Taurasi. Well, she uh, joked about the fact that she couldn't make a shot today. She was 8 of t uh, 21. She uh, still had 20 points. She had 20 points in the game, uh, 4 of 12 from downtown. Listen, she had that stretch where she scored 30-plus uh, in three consecutive games. Do they need Paige Beckers to be a bigger score as they go into the month of March into the NCAA tournament to reach the goal that they want to reach? Well, I, I think those... <laughs> 30-point games that she had were great. Obviously, it tells you what a remarkable player she is. But I think the team also had to learn something about themselves, that we can't let a freshman have to get 30 points a game. Because going down the stretch in March, she doesn't have, you never, you know, Freshmen are unpredictable, although Paige is a little more predictable than your average freshman. She's never had that NCAA experience, the tournament experience, and as, as as a junior, you want to say, okay, you shouldn't have to carry all that load and that burden of this team, especially because come tournament time, you've never experienced that kind of stuff. Like playing games close together, road, like all those things are very different. So let's not rely strictly on Paige Becker's scoring 30 points a game. You just can't do it. So now the balance to me has gotten so much better in the last couple games. I think it's all about balance. But is she capable of scoring 30 a game? Yes, if need be. But she does nothing's forced with her nothing's you know what it, every game's different right right you know Westbrook was a little quiet today but you look at her stats and she contributed a lot you you know every game has a flow to it and Paige just goes with the flow whoever needs to score but hopefully coming down the stretch you don't need your freshman to have 30 points a game but you know in the back of your head that you got that it, in your pocket right right if we need her to step up take over a game she has shown right. she can do that, which is which is significant. By the way, Avina Westbrook, as you say, seemed quiet out there. Yeah. 16 very quiet points. Yeah. Efficiently, 6 of 12 shooting for the Huskies. More to come here on our post-game broadcast. When we come back, we're going to hear from the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema. By the way, UConn ended up shooting 51% in the game, so they were efficient as a team, and we're coming back in just a moment. UConn Huskies knock off Butler 97 to 68 as we get a look at your game leaders. Aaliyah Edwards led UConn in scoring and rebounding and Paige Beckers those 14 assists. That's a new UConn single season uh, uh, one game record. Single game record. Uh, single game record is what I was looking for. Yes, there, there it is. <laughs> they should have made this the freshman leaders instead of game leaders. All freshmen there leading the way. I'm sure our producer Sean likes your suggestion. <laughs> Hey, let's hear from the Hall of Famer, Gino Oria, right now. <laughs> Coach, congrats on the win. Uh, Butler made it tough early. How'd you like how your team responded, and are you encouraged a week out from the postseason? Um, I, thought the, I thought the first half was not, not very encouraging from a defensive standpoint. Um, to give up as many open, you know, open threes as we did. Uh, second half, I thought our defense was uh, was was much better. Uh, our ball movement was much better. Uh, um, but Monday night, obviously, our defense is going to have to be a lot better than it was today for us. Um, you know, for, against Marquette. A pair of double doubles today from two freshmen. 
Can you speak to how some of the young players on this team have uh, developed and, and oftentimes led the way? Well, when you watch, you know, I said earlier, when you watch Aaliyah play, you know, you just are impressed with her work ethic, and how hard she competes, and how, uh, how aggressive her mindset is, uh, and her competitiveness, you know, every possession. She just, she just plays the game the way, um, you know, the way big guys are supposed to play. She plays big. And, um, and Paige and Nika, you know, have done a great job with the ball. Um, you know, Paige is, I mean, Nika's making just enough shots to keep everybody, you know, keep everybody honest. Um, you know, we got a, you know, obviously we got a great game from Paige. Um, ball handling wise, she didn't shoot the ball too great uh, tonight. But, um, oh, you know, we got a great game out of E. You know, you, you have to get contributions from a lot of people at this time of the year. You know, you can't just think that, um, you know, one person is going to be able to carry you. Speaking of this time of year, is there a key message that you want your team to focus on heading into March here? Uh, well, after Monday, you know, we can start talking about tournament time. But, uh, you know, first we've got uh, Monday, you know, Monday's game to, to, to take care of. Um, and then the message is, is, is simple. You know, you, uh, you know, after Monday, you either have two games left or you have um, nine or any in between. You know, um, so the me the message after Monday, uh, at you know Thursday Thursday and Friday's practices is um, it's going to be about you know the urgency that every game presents from here on in. All right, so that is Gina Oriema's post-game address to the media, and it's amazing, right? That this We're heading towards March. A couple of days, we're in the month of March. One more game to go in the regular season and then into tournament play. Mm -hmm. And as we heard Gino say right there, there are so many different things that go into with this. And you were mentioning Avina Westbrook a short time ago, and we spoke about the fact that she had 16 points in this game. Where do you look at Avina? You know, she's a junior. She's one of the upperclassmen yeah. here, but her first year at UConn, she is tournament tested. How important do you think she is to this team and she just brings such a maturity to this team to this young team she's been there she played at Tennessee she has more experience than all of them um, they call her the mom of the team because she's always doing stuff and keeping everyone together in that chemistry I love her that she's okay playing a role right she's okay if she gets the glory or she doesn't get the glory she does exactly what's needed of her I mean you we always say too right sometimes she has quiet games and we look down and she goes quiet 16 points eight rebounds I mean she does her job and she is solid most mostly every game is she a star every game not necessarily but is she solid yes and that's what Gino needs because he trusts that he knows what he's getting from her every night there's no inconsistency there might be with her shooting right Right? not making a lot of shots, but you always know what you're going to get from Avina Westbrook as a coach so you have confidence in her. And I think you bring up a really good point there, Kara, because good teams have players who understand the roles and accept those roles. Let's not forget, she was a big-time player at Tennessee, yep. then transferred, sat out, had a couple of knee surgeries. She's come back, and she's had a really solid season. Not spectacular, yeah. but understanding what her role is on this team and more than understanding it, accepting it. Right. And when it comes to winning championships, how important is it to have players who, who accept what the, listen, she's not the star. Yeah. She was the star at Tennessee. Yeah. But accepting that in a Connecticut uniform is how important. Well, and, and that's a great word to describe it. She accepts her role. She embraces her role. She's not just a role player. Um, and the, she does spectacular things, too. Hey, we're not talking about, like, you know, a player at the end of the bench. Javina Westbrook is a starter, and she does a lot for this team, but she is accepting of her role on any night, you know, it's not like she's pinpointed into like, oh, this is what you do on our team. She's pinpointed as we trust you, you're mature, you're a great player. So on this night, do this because they're not guarding that. Knock down your shots, you know. So she does. She does a good job of, I mean, that's part of this team, right? This is part of their identity. Very unselfish. Yes. That's why they're going to win 
in my opinion, because they're unselfish and there's no, you know, I said it before, put on the cape and save the day kind of person, you know, Paige is a little bit like that. But for the most part, this is going to be a collective effort. And I think that that's what makes them go so good. No egos and very unselfish. Let's get checked right now. The drive of the game. It is presented by Subaru and the Huskies on the break right here. Nika Mule. And look at the passing. Mule to Beckers to Aaliyah Edwards. I think it's, I think Nika Mule's passing is a little underrated right um, just because we talk about Paige Beckers and how she passes to people I think Nika Mule sees the, fl the floor extremely well and that shows you that there it is the drive of the game it is presented by Subaru so UConn gets the win they remain undefeated in the Big East Conference just one loss on the season UConn getting the win tonight uh, tonight over Butler 97 to 68 we'll come back and wrap up our post game coverage in just a moment Programming note right here, we've got our tournament preview show coming up on Thursday, March 18th, right here on SNY. This get our final uh, game broadcast of the season. It's amazing how quickly yeah. it goes. Our, earlier in the show, we asked you, uh, our SNY fan choice, uh, which UConn player had succeeded your expectations the most this season. And in a runaway, Leah Edwards at 56 Percent. I, listen, Paige Beckers, we knew what we were going to get, but yeah. Aaliyah, sort of a runaway winner, especially after today's game. And yeah. I've got to give you props because from day one this season, <laughs> you were on saw Aaliyah Edwards. Her. I yeah, saw what did you see? Scout you here. are. You are. Um, I, I just liked. Or, like Gino said, her aggressiveness, her competitiveness. She, you tell her go get the ball, she's going to go get the ball. So the, I just like her energy and her aggressiveness. By the way, uh, this wrapping up our eighth season on this show together. I cannot believe eight years eight. and it's well, what, that possible? parting such sweet sorrow. Is I that, is that know. I know. I hate when the season ends. I know. Another season in the book. So great to be with you, Kara. Love too. your insights. Thank you. So for Kara Walters, I'm Gary Apple. We thank you for joining us on the way out the door. Sights and sounds of UConn's win over Butler.